Radar. Radar has been around for a long time. There's many kinds of radars that you may be familiar with. Police scanners, all the way to air traffic control radars, maritime radars on tops of boats. And there's also radars that are flying today on military aircraft. The kind of radar that we make is called synthetic aperture radar. It's not a radar like you might think of with the line spinning around and dots showing up on the screen. That's not the kind of radar we make. It's synthetic aperture radar. And what that really means is we're able to form really high resolution images using radar. So in essence, it's like a radar camera. The frequency that we operate at can see right through cloud smoke, fog, dust. It can penetrate all those obscurants, and so it offers a really unique and important capability for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance systems. Synthetic aperture radars have been to space. NASA has put a lot of effort into synthetic aperture radar, gone and imaged planets in our solar system. They've imaged our polar caps. They've helped us understand climate, and it's highly capable, and the capabilities that it offers are highly desirable. Its ability to see through weather, its ability to find moving targets, its ability to maintain track on targets. Those are all things that our operators really want. Our operators are looking for sensors and tools and capabilities to solve problems. And they have a variety of sensors at their disposal. And they may pass up radar because it's been historically too expensive, too hard to use, too unreliable, too hard to understand, too long of a lead time. And one of our goals with democratizing radar is to eliminate those barriers and to make it so that these operators who need radar can afford it and that they can understand it, that they can use it, that they can get their hands on it. We believe that once we get this capability into their hands, that they will make use of it in ways that we didn't imagine. And they'll find ways to bring incredible new value and capability to their different missions. There's a lot more that goes into democratizing radar than just developing a new sensor capability. It's about the manufacturing and the supportability. It's about the ability to fly it in-house on our own aircraft systems so that we can become familiar and exercise different CONOPS and test with the radar systems. We are really excited to have our new Cessna 206, we call Magnum, here at MSAR. It offers us increased capability to fly higher and faster and to stress test and push our radar systems and continue to develop that capability. It's also important to be able to train about our radar systems. There are a lot of people that are not familiar with radar and the unique capabilities and benefits it brings. And it's important to us that we have an in-house training team and demonstration team so that we can show off the radars and help people understand the capabilities and benefits that it can bring to them. We also are excited to kick off a new radar education campaign this next year. We want to help operators and customers understand the benefits that radar has to offer. We're going to be spending some time going through and explaining the different aspects of radar, what value it brings to the table, what CONOPS it can support, how to put it on your aircraft, how to interpret it, how hard is it to understand. We want to walk you through some of those different aspects of radar and help you understand what radar is and why you'd want it on your aircraft systems. And we want to make it so that radar is no longer too hard to use or too heavy or too expensive or whatever reason that an operator or customer may have passed up radar in the past. We want it to be included on the aircraft. We want to fly with you because ultimately it's when we fly with you and we provide value to our customers that we will have democratized radar.